All right, guys, welcome back to Just Call Me Boats. Today, I'm going to be changing out the power steering rack in my 2006 Town & Country, and I'm going to show you how it's done, so let's get started. Okay, before you get started, um, there's going to be a, quite a few steps involved. First thing I would recommend you do is uh, get a hand pump. You can use a, a, a turkey baster that you can pick up at Dollar Tree for a buck. Uh, and you're going to want to drain your reservoir of any extra fluid. Um, there's going to be fluid in the lines, it's going to come out, it's going to make a mess when you disconnect them from the steering rack. But you want to eliminate as much fluid in the system as you can. And right here I have, uh, it's a, just a pump that I picked up at Walmart for a few bucks. Um, and I've already uh, emptied out the fluid reservoir, I put it into a uh, ATF4 bottle that I had laying around. These systems on these Chryslers, they don't use regular power steering fluid in their power steering systems. They actually use ATF4 transmission fluid. That is what Chrysler recommends for these. So that's why I have that bottle laying around. Okay guys, as you can see behind me, I have the van lifted up. I have uh, two jack stands underneath it. It's always a good idea when you lift a vehicle and put it on jack stands, I always leave my hydraulic jack up against the bottom of the vehicle if I know I'm going to be going underneath it. I want that extra layer of protection. Also, when I take off the front tires, I'm gonna be putting those underneath the vehicle as well um, in case something fails and the vehicle falls. Those will be my safety, um, a way that I can possibly escape from being crushed by my van. So with that, uh, we're going to take off the front tires and uh, we're going to continue on with the steering rack rep replacement. I'm also, uh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, uh, I'm also going to be changing the front struts on this vehicle um, because I have to get it realigned after I put the steering rack in. I might as well put the new struts on and take care of all of that problem all in one shot and I won't have to deal with it again uh, for a while at least. Uh, this vehicle has uh, a little over 300,000 miles on it. I'm, most people would have uh, sent it to the junkyard already but it runs really good so I'm going to keep it in the family as long as I can. Now these lug nuts are 19 millimeter. I have this uh, four-way wrench um, which has multiple sizes on it, one of which is a 19 millimeter. What you need to do is you need to crack your uh, lug nuts loose before you lift the vehicle. That way there, it just makes it so much easier to take the tire off. Well, as you can see here, all the fluid that has been leaking, that's uh, that cross member is very wet and the boot has uh, imploded a little bit and that's a sure sign that uh, the seals have gone bad and uh, this rack uh, needs to be replaced. First I'm going to be uh, taking off the tie rod ends uh, right here on both sides and then uh, I'll be taking off this reinforcer plate down here um, there's 21 bolts that hold that plate on. Um, they vary in size from 20 millimeter. Uh, well, there's some that are 21 millimeter, some that are 20 millimeter, and some that are 18 millimeter. Um, All together, there's 21 bolts that hold that plate on, and that's how you gain access to the steering rack itself. What you're going to want to do with this process. You're going to have a uh, 21 millimeter wrench and you're going to 
hold on to the tie rod end. Actually, yeah, the inner tie rod end. I just use a pair of vice grips for this. It works well. You're just gonna want to hold that shaft in place while you get down here. want to back it off a little bit so that unlocks your outer tie rod end and then there's a cotter pin down here you're going to want to straighten up and take out and remove Don't worry if you destroy this cotter pin. They're pretty inexpensive to replace. And you probably should go ahead and uh, replace it anyway. Because the metal fatigue of being bent back and forth, even just a few times, can cause it to fail. There we go. Wow. <laughs> That's one tough cotter pin right there. All right, let me straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, never mind. All right, set that aside. This is a 18 millimeter bolt. Actually, let me rephrase that, an 18 millimeter nut. Spin that down a little bit. Get yourself a big hammer. Give it a couple of whacks right, right on this surface. Don't hit this up here at all, because you don't want to cut that boot. That's all you have to do, take the tie rod end off. Now, when you unscrew this, you want to count how many revolutions, how many turns it is, so that when you put this on the new steering rack, you can count how many turns it's got to go back in. Now yours is going to vary, obviously. And put the nut back on. And you can screw it down far enough to get the cotter pin back in too, if you wish. That way there you don't lose any parts. That's what I always do so that I can keep track of my parts so I never have anything come up missing. Set that aside for now. You're all done on this side so far. Uh, you can go ahead and take your vice grip off and move to the other side and repeat the process. Now on the driver's side here, it was 25 turns for that tie rod end to come off. And something a little surprising, the lock nut on the inner tie rod end on the other side, remember I told you it was a 21 millimeter? Well, surprise, surprise, this side was a 22 millimeter. So make sure you have 
at least a 21 and a 22 millimeter wrench handy just for these kind of surprises. Okay, let's get started on this uh, reinforcer plate. Again, that's uh, a variation of 21, 18, and uh, I think there's one 15 millimeter bolt in there. I'll show you when I get there. always handy to have a piece of old plywood to lay on when you're working in a dirt driveway. It uh, makes laying on those rocks a little bit easier. And if the ground's a little wet, you don't get muddy and dirty. Of course, you're going to get dirty anyway, but, you know, why push it? All right. Man, I messed up. These are 19s. Ugh. There you go. Okay, these first two are... Well, I'm sorry. Gosh, I'm all messed up. This one's at least a 19 millimeter. don't just uh, uh, screw up into the frame they're actually a nut and bolt and there you go first one's out here oh you also have two 10 millimeter bolts here and one here and here uh, those 10 millimeter bolts hold your uh, a couple different components and your oil cooler in place and uh, your 15s are back over here and the rest of these are a mixture of 19 to 21 millimeter bolts in my search for the correct size. You can use a 13 16 socket on these bigger uh, bolts. They're not exactly metric as they would have you believe. And uh, This isn't going well. There we go. If you have an impact gun, you know, by all the, all means, use it. Um, for me, working outside, I have to drag out a compressor. And the weather's been a little iffy these last few days with all of the rain that we've been getting here in Michigan. And uh, I just don't want to take any chances of having my compressor sitting outdoors in the rain. And by using just simple hand tools, I'm showing you that it can be done with just simple hand tools. You don't have to have expensive tools. You do have to have a few specific tools. 
like the normal combination wrench set does not include wrenches above 18 millimeters so you will have to go and purchase the larger sized uh, wrenches separately but that should pretty much be all you'd have to do is just uh, a 21 millimeter and a 22 millimeter wrench and uh, you're gonna have to uh, buy a uh, line wrench as well um, you don't actually have to have a line wrench but it does come in handy uh, when doing the power steering lines and I'll show you that in a little while Okay, there's the uh, steel reinforcer panel uh, that you have to remove to get access to the steering rack. Uh, mine did not come out easily. Um, 19 of the bolts came out fairly easy. The last two I had to fight and uh, I finally got it out though. And uh, power washed it and it needs a coat of paint so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a coat of paint on this and uh, let it dry while I'm uh, continuing the repair okay here we are inside uh, on the driver's side floorboard um, I just noticed that my two-part boot here has torn and so I'm gonna have to Get a replacement for that while I'm uh, you know got this tore apart you're gonna have uh, three little uh, sheet metal screws here they're 5 16 or at least that's what I'm trying to use <laughs> Okay, there's one of two ways that you can uh, separate your steering wheel from the uh, unit. And that is, you can knock that roll pin out of the joint down here. Or you can come up here, you can't really see it, but there's a nut and bolt kind of a clamp up here. Uh, and you take that out and you can separate it up here. But if you do that, then you have this long shaft still attached to here that you're gonna have to fight to get up, get past this firewall. If you separate it down here, it's much easier because you just have the short shaft on the steering uh, rack as, uh, itself. Now, something uh, that's important to note here, you don't wanna let your steering wheel just spin freely um, because you have a clock spring in there and if you don't have that set right you could possibly break that clock spring and um, That'll cause a whole other series of issues. So you want to make sure that when you do this Your steering wheel is in the proper position And then you knock that pin out and then you just have to lift up on this shaft and separate it like that now, I'm going to attempt to replace this boot if I can get it past there. I may end up having to separate it down there, or up there rather, just to change this boot out. But it is quite tore up, so I just might go ahead and do that. Anyway, the 
steering shaft is free and clear. And the next step is to uh, remove the uh, power steering lines. And it's always, I find anyway, it's best to uh, remove them from here, from this point. I, you can't really see that boots in the way. Um, let me move the camera here. It's always best to kind of remove the power steering lines from this uh, vantage point because from underneath you have very little room uh, as you do here but at least here you can see what you're doing you don't have to do it by feel so um, let's get on with that okay for this next step you're gonna want to get an 18 millimeter line wrench and uh, to break the uh, power steering lines free um, this is the best option that you can use um, because if you use a standard 18 millimeter wrench you have to use the open end and you run the risk of rounding off that fitting that's on the end of that hose so you want to use a line wrench like this to break them free. After that, you can go ahead and switch to a standard uh, wrench and uh, take them out. Now I'm gonna take the top one out first and then once that one's uh, loose and out of the way, then I'm going to break the bottom one loose and take that off as well. When you're working through the floorboard here, you're only gonna get, you know, I like a quarter of a turn um, with the wrench and, uh, and then you have very limited space to put your hand through here but just keep working at it okay that first line is free just gotta wiggle it out of the way Now when you put these back in, this is the best way to do it, um, to put your lines back on the steering rack. You're not going to be able to thread them in from underneath. Um, this is the second time I've had to change the steering rack in this vehicle. And I learned from the first time that you cannot get these power steering lines to thread into the rack from underneath. Um, if you do, you run the risk of uh, stripping out the threads inside the power steering rack because remember the power steering lines have a galvanized steel fitting on the end but the steering rack itself is made out of aluminum so it's very easy very very easy to strip the threads inside the holes and once you do that you void any warranty and uh, you're stuck with a steering rack that you cannot attach power steering lines to the best easiest way to do it is right the way I'm doing it right here. They don't show you this in other videos. Um, I don't know why. Um, I've watched three or four or five of them and none of them show how to get these power steering lines off. And so I'm showing you today how to do that. The easiest way to do it, like I said, is right through this egg-shaped hole in the floorboard. Okay, fellas. I got my uh, steering rack out. Always a good idea to compare the new one to the old one to make sure that you got the right one. A lot of times parts get mixed up. I had that problem one time with CD axles. They give me the wrong CD axles. So I always compare uh, parts when I get them. This is the new one that's got to go in. Of course, this is the old one, and uh, this bolt right here that, that goes in this hole, uh, fellas, it's a real pain in the butt. It's a 21 millimeter bolt with a 21 millimeter nut, and you've got roughly an inch and a half of space to get a, a wrench up in there. Let me show you what I did um, to resolve that problem.
All right, guys, don't forget to uh, uh, remove the jam, uh, jam nuts from the old steering rack because you got to re reuse them on the new one. Uh, I, after I pulled mine off, I just hit, hit them with the uh, brake cleaner, clean all the dirt, grease, oil off of them. It also pays to check the uh, all the material inside the box. Here's the new O-rings. Those go on your uh, power steering lines, the fittings on the end of the lines. Um, so you make sure you change those out just because you don't want it to leak. Um, also, you have to flush your system uh, to make sure you got all the old fluid and muck out of there. Mine, uh, if you recall, I, I sucked out the fluid out of the reservoir and then um, it had leaked down sufficiently. There's no fluid in the system whatsoever, so it should be really easy to flush the system. So uh, let's get on to the uh, changing of the O-rings. Now to change your O-rings, you might need to pick up a tool like this um, that'll help you uh, get the old O-rings off the fitting and these just will pop in place. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you that, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So let's get on that, I guess. There's no uh, groove or anything that these O-rings lock into. They just slip onto the end of the hose. It's uh, pretty simple to just pop them off and pop them on. Make sure you have a rag so that you can wipe the ends off. And it was nice of them to include in this kit new uh, cotter pins for your uh, for your uh, outer tie rod ends. Now, when you put these O-rings on, make sure you slide them all the way back. Otherwise, they'll give you trouble when it comes time to threading the uh, power steering lines back into the uh, power steering unit, or excuse me, on the rack and pinion. Now that that's done, what you're going to want to do is Get your steering rack. Pop those caps out of there. Now you're going to want to save those caps because when you put the old one back in the box to take it back to get your core, uh, you want to make sure that uh, it doesn't leak all over the inside of the box and make a mess inside your truck or your car or whatever back of your van. Alright, so you lift it up and you push it through to the driver's side and you 
fight with it a little bit and then you get it in place. Not quite yet. Looks like I tired her out. Let's get back to the repair video. Okay, now that I've got all my nuts and bolts cleaned up, I got my tools set aside here for my uh, 18 millimeter bolts. A long journey my friends okay like I said and hopefully you can see this uh, you have to bend this out of the way to get your 21 millimeter wrench up in there and you have to put it in like that to get on top of that nut it's the only way I found to do it and it's mostly done by feel because you can't see what's going on there we go got it on there I'm going to use an impact to drive this home. A lot of guys like to take all of this emission stuff and your uh, oil cooler out of the way and you can do that. It's just extra steps. By all means, if you wish to do that, you can. But these are 18 millimeter, these are the two bolts. Yeah, I didn't show you uh, how to remove the rack from the van uh, because honestly, The sailor in me was coming out and uh, YouTube doesn't like that kind of language. Oh. Okay, so that part's in. Now, you might want to uh, crank this out again uh, a little bit now that you've got it up in place. 
uh, you know, turn the shaft up here so you can bring your inner tie rod end out. Uh, kind of center it, center it as much as you can um, so that it's easier uh, for the alignment person. And don't forget to bend your heat shield back out when you're done. Okay, guys. Got everything bolted back in, pretty much. Now it's time to put the uh, all the other stuff back together, starting with this uh, plate. I've got my tie rod ends back on. I've got them kind of eyeballed into place. And uh, now it's just uh, putting the uh, final touches back on it's all pretty self-explanatory from this part you just uh, put it back together the way you took it apart uh, and that's just about it Thank you.